Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Anchor Star Wealth Market Update. I'm your host, Allison Anchor Star, and today we'll be talking about the Russian stock market, mortgage rates, and whether or not the bear market is over. But before we begin, as a reminder, this is a financial education presentation should not be considered as personal financial advice. Full disclaimer information is available at anchorstarwealth.com. Good morning, Steve. The Russian stock market is set to open tomorrow for the first time in a month. How do you see this affecting the U.S. stock market? Uh, good morning, Allison, and thank you so much for that intro. And good morning, everybody. Obviously, we're on the road. That's why the background looks a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> and we may have some technical issues, so bear with us. Uh, but uh, what Allison's asking about here is the Russian stock market. And it's been closed, obviously, since the beginning of the uh, Ukraine-Russian conflict. So almost for a month now, and it's set to open today. So, uh, you know, the question that, that Allison asked, is it going to bleed over into the U.S. stock market? And I will say to a certain extent, yes, because there are so many things that and you know correlated and related between investments that inevitably, uh, when the Russian stock market opens tomorrow, you're going to see some stuff get sold off, right? People have been locked out of being able to sell for almost a month now, whether it's U.S. investors, Russian investors, or anywhere else in the world, people are going to be dumping assets over there to reduce the exposure. So therefore, you know, directly impact on the U.S. stock market. Probably not, but I do think indirectly with all the funds and things that are out there, we are going to see an overall hit. Um, but the one thing I want to kind of leave you with is just imagine, th- you know, if the U.S. stock market did that, if we end up getting into, a, you know, the U.S. stock market closed for 9-11 for a couple of days uh, while we kind of got back on our feet. But just imagine if the U.S. market was closed for an extended period of time and you had your assets locked away, that is really that would be really nerve wracking. So, uh, you know, my, you know, I feel for all the folks that are involved with that, but I'm also excited that the Russian stock market is back open free markets, you know, obviously for, for most of us uh, believe that free markets are a good thing. So just glad that they're opening back up and we will see what the fallout is. Next, the 30 year mortgage rate is up 4.5%. Will this cool down the hot housing market? Well, you know that the Fed Reserve is raising interest rates. So last Wednesday, they raised it a quarter point. They projected that they're going to raise it up to 1.75% by the end of the year. And even Chairman Powell yesterday was talking specifically about even having to increase rates more than that. Well, yeah, two things going on. So how it affects the housing market is, first of all, the Fed controls the short-term interest rate. We all know that. Um, but the open market kind of controls where mortgage rates go. So really, the you know, with mortgage rates rising up to 4.5% very quickly, that could continue on up. So the, the days of the 3% or sub-3% you know, mortgage, you know, for your 30 year or 15 year respectively, uh, you know, term mortgages, I think those are over, you know, at least for the short time, maybe even for good, you know, historically, those are ridiculously low, even at 4.5% today, which was the morning print number, still historically low compared to what it's, you know, cost for a mortgage in the US over the years. So how's it going to affect the housing market? It is a headwind. Um, does that mean your, you know, your house that just doubled because of all the inflation is going to go right back to where it was? No, but certainly the continuing in, you know, house prices, home, excuse me, home prices rising can't be the expectation. So I think we've, we're probably going to plot plateau here um, because houses are now more expensive for buyers. So uh, I think it is going to cool off the, uh, the housing market. And I think it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, but certainly if you're looking at purchasing something, I would do it sooner than later uh, if you're factoring in the, uh, the mortgage rates, because I think it does go higher from here. Last, the S&P 500 retraced 50% of its losses in the past week and a half. Does this signal the bear market is over? Well, that, that's a great question. And what Allison is talking about, if you look at this chart here uh, that I have uh, shared out with you, again, this is that the, the sell-off from the, the beginning of the year all the way to the bottom here at the beginning of March. This is the 50% retracement that's being talked about here. Now, uh, is that important in self? No. But it is important in the fact that this has occurred 21 times in history. And again, these numbers are from Jim Cramer uh, earlier this morning, who was put, put this out and talked to this. Um, and I know he has his stuff straight. So it's happened 21 times in history. When the S&P retraces over 50% or to that 50% level, the bear market has been over, right, eventually meaning we're not gonna go back and right back into the bear market. So I think overall, it's an, it's an amazing sign. Now, when is the official bear market over? Well, the market has to hit new highs for, to, for, for us to officially 
mark the end of the bear market. So when you think back in March 2020, you know, kind of the shortest bear market ever, right? We had the 35% in account, you know, 30 calendar days, we had that big sell-off immediately into a bear market. And then the retracement was almost immediate off into April and May, and then we were back at new highs. Um, so, so it was a super short bear market. Am, am I making the call here that we're gonna go right back to new highs anytime soon? No, I think 2022 has plenty of challenges uh, that we need to, you know, kind of reduce or mitigate or overcome before the stock market goes higher. But certainly, uh, I, I do think that the retracement is a good sign and it does mark that the bottom is in at least. So when you think of that risk reward, is it okay to put money here to work here? Yes. Uh, CNBC is full of people saying that no, it's it's too early. Um, you have to do your own due diligence and make the call. But I'm perfectly comfortable investing at the, you know, at, at current levels. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. Please submit your questions as a comment through social media or directly to our email at VIP services at anchorstarwealth.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe to get daily updates. That's all we have for today's show. I'm Allison Anchorstar, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.